Hello boys and girls. I've got a real treat tonight. It is an update for my Newman motor. We're going to put the largest quantity of voltage through it ever previously seen. And I have no idea what the results will be. Um, the objective of the exercise is uh, two-pronged. I've upgraded my power supply with some 3D printed and, uh, and old microwave parts. Um, that now goes uh, just a whisker over the 1000 volt mark. Um, previously we were limited to about 750 volts. Um, and there's quite a few balance issues. So it uh, remains clear what that's going to do. Um, the magnets are siliconed in place. But um, I'm pretty confident they're not going to go anywhere. Um, but I'm less confident about the uh, the entire rigidity of, uh, <laughs> of the universe that's about to collapse in around us. Um, and also, the um, the second objective is this here. Um, the human mode is quite a simple thing. Um, I want to test my old H-bridge, which I know was good for 750 volts. Um, that has always worked very reliably. There are a few newer setups I've got going, um, but before I say goodbye to this one completely, I uh, I want to push it to its max, see what I can get out of it. So I've got a new power supply that will push that really hard, um, and this to protect it. Um, this circuitry, um, as you can see, still performs the same basic triggering function. However, if something goes wrong, and um, and I stop the shaft or, it, or, or something like that happens um, I've got I've got some pull down transistors so when one's firing it makes it possible for the other one to fire so I can spin it around randomly all day and they'll never both fire at the same time um, the downside of that is of course I've got to swing it backs and forwards a few times before it finds its equilibrium and it's okay to start so I'm going to spin it up by hand. Um, it doesn't weigh very much. Um, and then turn on the power supply. And off we go. It seems remarkably recalcitrant to begin with. I haven't quite worked out why that is. Oh, it's the large capacitors on the input. Okay, got to charge them from scratch. I'm not going to do any RPM tests or anything. Um, this is purely a, um, a high voltage test. So we're running along at a couple of RPM, two and a half milliamps, about 340 volts. So let's give that a bump. The peak current jumped up to about six milliamps. Sorry about that. And the voltage is now up to 640. And now that it's up to speed, the volt, the uh, current has gone back down. We're back under just under four milliamps, about three milliamps, and uh, 680 volts. So it's leveled out. So this is um, the, the highest I've ever pushed it for is about 730. So what I'm going to do is put a heavy load on it and loosen it up a bit. There you go. That's quite, that's really a very heavy load, and it's jumped to 8 milliamps and pulled the voltage down to 500 volts. But that is, you know, quite a heavy load. If that shaft wasn't covered in um, epoxy resin and a shining agent, that would have really burnt my hand. But as it stands, it doesn't, it actually slides quite well. It just feels odd from applying so much pressure with so few repercussions. Um, so, let's hope that remains the case when I up the voltage again. So, I just gave it a fairly arbitrary twist and, and see what it picks up to. That's definitely breaking the record, coming up for 800 volts now. Current has leveled back down to 3.5 milliamps. And, um, and I have to be a bit careful doing this, there's this guillotine in front of me for timing, but I can, this one's got less torque, if I squeeze it basically as hard as I can, and I'll, I'll do that now, like, 
and fuck, a bit harder. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Ah, no, I can't. So, but the current did shoot right up. The old one did that much more efficiently. So that went up to 23 milliamps. And the voltage would have dropped down quite a bit as well. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what the efficiency was on that, but we'll check it out. It's um, it's of dubiously low efficiency. This particular, this is my worst Newman motor yet. Um, but that is somewhat intentional. Um, I think we've lost a component. Um, it's producing a strange buzzing sound. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Well, I'll turn it off before it does any more damage. Um, but uh, my next one um, is going to be heavier. Um, the reason for this one to be worse is that it has higher resistance. I would have thought that would be better, but I wanted to prove that for sure. What matters more than the resistance in these motors is of course having it nice and tight but critically the weight of the copper the drive coils have to be quite sizable um, the bigger they are the bigger the more of the magnetic field they can pick up and um, and that's why my my first ever one was so effective it had um, it had about twice the weight of copper on it so this is still very good very impressive um, I'm going to fix this, um, or I'll rather find out which transistor died under that heavy load, which is a bit surprising. That hasn't happened for a long time. Uh, fix that and see if we can run a, um, a maximum voltage test to find out what the voltage can really go up to. Um, yeah, and I might even try loading it again. That was very strange. Um, but then this whole setup is quite old and it's taken a lot of abuse. So. Um, not so much a fair measure, but anyway, let's see where it takes us. This, my friends, is a pivotal moment. Hopefully you watched my last video, I filmed that last night. Before my new motor comes in, I thought I'd give the circuitry on this one a final hurrah and turn it up to maximum. I was hoping to hit a thousand volts, a thousand volts for this motor, more than any car company has ever released. No one's skivering a thousand volt motor out there, but here we are, on my back bench, made for three dollars fifty. We have a one thousand volt motor, but unfortunately, in the demonstration to try and um, figure out exactly what the limit was, I gratuitously just maxed out the knob, and at eight hundred volts, it um. Well, it, it, it blew up. It blew up. That's a shame. Well, I wanted to see what the design is actually capable of. So I've come back. I've taken a few hours out of my schedule, replaced all the main drive transistors. I've taken out the two 80 ohm resistors and replaced it with some 10 ohm resistors. So there is a little protection in there, but not much. So if something does go wrong, Hopefully it won't blow up, but it probably will anyway. So the plan is to uh, to eliminate these transformers from the circuitry um, and simplify the H bridge considerably. That's the hope. Um, now I suspect there's a few reasons why it blew up yesterday, other than the fact that 800 volts was a new record. Um, I made a silly mistake and actually forgot to put in the uh, this capacitor here which should smooth out the peaks and prevent a lot of the uh, dangerous oscillations. So <laughs> that wasn't in there, so I'm surprised it even made it as high as it did. In fact, I was shocked it made it to 800 volts without the capacitor. That's quite remarkable. Um, and the conditions under which it blew were, were not typical. Um, I was squeezing and holding the shaft as hard as I possibly could um, with, with about 15 watts of input energy with exactly 15 watts of input energy I was completely unable to stop the shaft but I did slow it down uh, enough to um, to drop the input voltage uh, momentarily beneath the voltage that's outputted by the magnets 
So even though I was putting in 800 volts, um, the motor itself was putting out about a thousand. Um, and that's why the input current drops so low and that's why it's almost a perpetual motion machine. Uh, when you get it up to a stable RPM, um, it'll produce a, a, a modest degree of torque for almost no electrical input whatsoever. So, holding the shaft down, um, change the um, change the gap between the input and the and the output voltage uh, to such a degree that um, it um, didn't help the situation. So here we are again. It's running along at. Uh, 640 volts and about 6 milliamps so um, an under load if I give it a bit of a squeeze that voltage will peak up to about 8 or 9 milliamps I will actually be able to stop it at that level will but only just um, I had it turn up high last night at a point in which I cannot so Oh, it doesn't sound good. It's making bad noises. I have no idea whether this is possible or not. No, it appears to not be. The um, that's interesting. Interesting effect. Um, I suspect it might not be to do with the motor. Actually, the voltage output just started dropping, um, and the load wasn't going up. I suspect the modifications I've made to my um to my power supply have made it more fragile than it should otherwise have been and it is hot it is actually very very hot and the transistors are at the back oh yes oh yes ow I could not even get close to holding my hand on there um, okay checkmate but at least the motor's back up and running I might have to wait for this guy to cool down and um, maybe add some more heat sinking and try again uh, but it bodes well and I've decided what I'm going to do for the generator I'm going to couple this to another Newman motor if you'd like to see what that would look like um, then check back in tomorrow and see it ow 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 that is very heavy but um, we're going to get those up to the same level and couple the input and output shafts so that should be fun. Get a nice oscillation going there. So anyway, check back in tomorrow. See if we can make something extremely cool happen on the power meters. Thank you very much.